Good morning, everyone. How are you today? This is Billy, and my first project for my first how-to, which will be my third video, which I've been doing research on as to figuring out the pros and cons of how to do that, I'm going to go ahead and start with preparing papers to use in your resins. Now, I use a different, uh, well, a variety of different ways. So, before we get started with that, I'm going to have to use my Sharpie marker. And if you wouldn't mind, let's do an experiment real quick. I have these three Sharpies that um, are not giving me ink anymore. So, I'm thinking maybe by dipping them in a little rubbing alcohol, uh, we might be able to salvage them or get them started again. So, real quick, let's put a little alcohol in my little shot glass here. Just dip them in, see what happens, and we'll check back with them shortly. Now, I know you can make alcohol inks with the uh, dried up Sharpie pens, and that's another venture we'll take on. So let's see, I just soaked it up a little bit. Still a bit dry. Now, if I can do this without knocking them all over, we're gonna give them a soak. Got a few more here. Come on. Two orange. These are the fine tip pens, which I really like. I do a lot of detailed work and I use them quite a bit in my arts and crafts. So, you see how dry that is? There's nothing happening. Try it and do this to see if we have any success. I might have to add more alcohol to this, but see how it goes. Come on, stay in there and don't topple. That's it. The tips are in. We're just going to go ahead and let that set aside for a minute. I'll put it out of the way. And we'll proceed. Um, let me show you a few things about, you know, your papers. I, for instance, have these that I cut out of my crossword book because I do do crosswords every morning with my coffee and I want to put those in coasters. This is a coaster I made with, you know, playing cards. But these particular playing cards did not have a shiny finish such as these plant labels. And I'm going to use these in jewelry in some more uh, resining. So I don't need to prepare anything like this. These cards were uh, quite soft and porous. So um, we'll get those prepared. And these are butterflies that I have cut from paper. And these are already ready, set to go. So we will um, cover how to do that also. So let me move these out of the way real quick. First thing I want to do is go into decoupage. But before I decoupage these letters here, um, I'm not fond of this color. So I'm going to take my marker and just uh, color this in a little bit, make it a little darker. And I have a cat at my door wanting in or out. So let me get this done. That's Annie. She wants to go outside. You know, I was down to one cat not too long ago, and then three little strays were dropped off behind my home. So I, well, actually, there was, there was four. I found a home for one and kept the three because, of course, I got attached to them. And then I'm thinking that that was it. We had four cats now, plenty. Um, just a month ago, I was in my motorhome traveling from a little town called Oakley, which is an hour and a half for me. And unbeknownst, there was a kitten 
that rode in the tr chassis of my motorhome all the way back to my house. So she's quite tiny, quite frail. And of course, she's already got her first shot. And uh, her name is Lily. So we're back to five. What can I say? Just uh, that I have attracted cats and loved cats all of my life. So here we are. Five more. Let me let her out just a second. Hold on. I should have realized she was in the other room. Just a second. Come on. Go out. Oh, it wasn't Lily. It was Brian. Excuse me. You're going outside. All right, here we go. Now this letter F, you can paint it, you know, or do whatever, but it was handy. And I wanna use these in resin, so I'm just going to get the edges, give it a little coat of marker. Honestly, don't know what I would do without my marking pens. I just love them. Take a second here. Get it in the grooves. Yeah, when I was young, I was always crafting in my bedroom. Had the chance to go to college when I was in my 40s. And I second guessed myself. I, I thought about becoming an art teacher or getting into the accounting program. So I got into the accounting program. Now I'm retired. So I'm very blessed to be able to do this full time at my leisure. And like I said, this is my new venture. So if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to my new channel. Hit the like button and help me uh, grow a little bit. So that's what I'll be doing. Back to decoupage. Modge Podge. I have the gloss and I have the matte. I don't see a difference when you put them in resin. So because I use a gloss on more items and projects than the matte, I'm going to go ahead and use the matte on this one. So I have a piece of freezer paper here. We'll just give these a coat. If I can open it. Oh, it's stuck. There we go. I'm gonna do the back side first. This is my old decoupage brushes. I have two that I just keep strictly for decoupage because you know they get pretty beat up. Just a coat. Quite simple. Just watch your globs. We don't need globs. Because paper is porous, we need to seal it. And decoupage is so, or mod podge is so universal. You can use it on so many different things. a fine coat and then we'll set it aside. This seems so different to me because you know when I buy myself and be creative, you know, you're quiet or I listen to the radio, only talk to the cats or myself, which is not very often. 
So if you'll bear with me, I might tend to stutter and stammer. But I do that in regular conversation anyway. So there, you get the idea. Let's just do this last one. The reason I'm ewing, I'm using the um, ewing this medium is because these are thick and I'm afraid if you use the other methods you just wouldn't be able to seal them properly there'll be air and uh, you wouldn't be able to trim as close so I'll just leave that at, at that it doesn't take very long to dry and we'll set this aside okay Let's move on to shipping tape, strapping tape. This is actually Scotch storage tape. Uh, this works very well for your smaller items. What I'm gonna do, let me just stick this down so it doesn't run away from me. We'll grab a piece and see how far we can go with that. So. These are little pieces of uh, paper that came in a package that you colored and you put together and it has three layers, but I'm going to use them in resin. And you see they have punch hole marks. I'm not going to worry about that because when I do use it, I might put a bead on top or a little, you know, blitz. So I'm just going to stick this on my tape. Give myself a little space on the side of the tape here. And I'm just going to fold it over. All right. And we're going to braid those down in a second. So let me get rid of that one. Here's another little flower. Just stick this down. Fold it over. Oh, I could have gave myself a little more room, but that's okay. Put that aside. Here's another small one. I better give myself more room. I can just go here. Just put it to the edge. Fold it over. That works better. And you'll know. Just give yourself a little room on the edge. Like so. like that. These are a little bigger, but they have a fold mark in the middle, so I'm going to cut this apart because these would be nice to use on the edge of anything square or rectangular you're doing. So we'll just get rid of that. We'll just do this last one here. Do I have enough? Let's see. Mm. I think I have enough to maybe fold it over, and I do, just to the edge. Oh, close call, barely made it. All right, now these I can do without you having to watch. Oops, I just dropped the alcohol pans, but the alcohol, oh my goodness, fell on my F. That's okay. That's a little better than I did. All right. Now, I like to press these down and use my fingernail. Or a toothpick will work, or the end of a, you know, break the tip off a Q tip. And just bray this down so it's nice and tight. that. Get as close as you can to the paper piece. My brayers put aside. I don't know if I can grab it real quick, but I think this is going to work just fine. Turn it over. Do the other side. Muscle into it. 
And then what you're going to do is just trim. Now these are my craft scissors. They've been through a lot. I just trim as close as I can. But you must leave a little seam here so your resin cannot get through. Oh, it depends. Sometimes I use a make it a quarter of an inch, but these will just make it eighth of an inch and they should just work out fine. Just like that. Easy peasy. stuck to myself. So, this is what you get when you use tape. You can do these, or I can do these at another time. I don't want to bore you with that. So that is accomplished. Now, let's move on to contact paper. Now, contact paper works great for your bigger items, and I know I cut a piece off of here. So this is just your everyday, you can get at the dollar store, um, contact paper for your shelving, and for your Cricut. Use that on your Cricut rather than you know, paying quite a bit more for the actual Cricut for your paper. Will this fit here? Well, sort of. Um, this one has seams in it too, but I think I'm going to just uh, use the whole flower because once it's under resin, I don't think you'll see those seams too badly. But you've got, you know, it's nice that you have a measuring gauge so we can go four inches and then in another four inches. So let me trim this just a tad. Make sure we've got enough. for me today because I used you. That should be plenty. Good to go. I'm going to peel this back. Just a bit. Don't let it get away from you. Or you'll be all tangled up in it. Place my now see, that's got a little ink on it. I'm not going to worry about it because this will be the top and it won't show from the bottom. Let's stick that on. Peel that away. And fold over. you're going to do the same thing you do with your tape. It's basically the same technique. Get around those corners, spray it down. Secure those edges because boy if that resin runs in can ruin your whole project. No, I don't have fingernails. So, spray. You know, it also brings a color out in your coloring too. The reason I did these is I haven't sat down and colored for a while. So, I thought, oh, let me just be a kid again. And I'm going to trim that like so. So once it's in the resin, you won't see the edges of the contact paper. Come on. 
I should use my other scissors. We'll get into decoupage too because I do have some really beautiful things I've done that I'll have to show you in um, decoupage. I'm quite proud of them. And there's a old oar that belonged to my father. And uh, I've got it sanded, but I do want to decoupage it with fish. All right. There's your contact paper technique ready to go. Set that aside. And we can move this out of the way. And I organized this room, but I still have limited space. Oh, I do want to show you. I have this great Fiskars uh, paper cutter. Works really, really well. My blade's getting a little dull, but that's easy to replace. Um, now that's what I used to cut my answers to the crossword puzzles. We're going to use a laminator. Boy, a million dollars. Wouldn't that be nice if that was real? Um, I made some uh, trays with money and poker chips and just, uh, you know, I want to make another one where these are all just fanned out like you're loaded. Um, found these at the dollar store. It had, you know, coins and uh, the fake bills and I, they get, you get quite a bit in the package. These are just a few of what I acquired. So we're going to laminate these. Now, a great gift my daughter gave me for Christmas was this scotch. Oh, better turn it on, right? Scotch laminator. Well, I guess it might take a bit to heat up. And you can buy these. Uh, folders where you place your item in, fold it over, and we'll put it through the laminator. So let's do this right away. Get a few of these lined up. Now I lost the opening part. Oh, where'd it go? That's got to be it. All right. So I'm going to do these right side up. And I'm going to give myself some space between them, and I can probably only fit two. And normally I would cut that strip off and save it, but we won't worry about that today. We can do six, I suppose. Move these over just a skosh. Plenty of room. I'm hoping that's not going to take too long to uh, heat up. We'll see. What do I have? Tape. So while that's heating, let's see if these pins work. If not, we tried, and uh, we'll make alcohol ink out of them. Well, look at that. That's a fail. 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 Oh, well, that's a shame. I could have tried water, I suppose, but that didn't cross my mind. So let me just set that aside. Put the caps on. There went my resin cup. And uh, we'll try this experiment later making alcohol ink. How's that sound? So I don't want to waste these. I don't waste 
a little lot of things. I always say, don't throw that out. I can make something with that. Come on, Laminator. We are waiting on you. I guess in the meantime, that's why that's where I spilled the alcohol. Look at that. Oh well. Meanwhile, I spilled it there. Paper towel. Oh, excuse me, I gotta reach. I don't see the green light yet. Meanwhile, I'm gonna do the top coat of my Mod Podge, and those will be ready to set in resin. This one got ruined, we'll throw that out. I can still put a coat on here. You can be generous, I just wouldn't want to keep globs on there. It's nice to have the freezer paper because they don't stick. Gosh, I do have that plugged in. in the water. Seal my Mod Podge. Put that aside. And, you know, I feel heat coming out. Maybe we'll run it through twice, but until then, let's just give it a shot. Move this over here so you can see it. So I think you can see it. See if it will go ahead and feed through. Oh, whoops, I got it crooked. Uh, oh well, it's going. Might take a, a couple of tries. So we've covered, well, we've literally, literally covered paper with scotch tape, shipping tape, or excuse me, not scotch, well, scotch storage tape, shipping tape package tape. It's, to me, it's all the same. I don't know the difference. And uh, the Mod Podge. And well, now the laminator. I guess that's about it. Oh, let me tell you something. Some people have told me you can use polyurethane spray on your papers. I wouldn't try it because you know your paper will just get wet. I'm not sure how long it would take to dry. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, I use this for a lot of projects, but not for paper. And I do want to say your polyurethane through time, I've noticed on projects I painted and tried to protect, white will eventually yellow. So, if you're going to use this rather than a brush-on um, protectant, uh, avoid using white paint or white colors because they will yellow. You don't want that. Where are we? We've got it. Look at that. We've got it. I have friends that do crossword puzzles all the time, so um, I want to make coasters for them for Christmas. Shh. Shelly, you didn't hear that. Okay. Oh, and the contact paper. We did the contact paper. So, you know, like I said before, cut these out. I could use my cutter, but we'll just... I know the square in my coaster is, uh, the space is three and a half, so I might have to trim these down a little more. 
these are three inches. And like I said, you're never going to see the clear laminate tape or contact paper when you put it in resin. So here we are. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you didn't think I babble on too much, but you know, first try. We'll see how it goes. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I have friends now that have subscribed to my channel. Please look for Billy Holman Creations. I will, um, well, there'll be a link on the video. And uh, if you would like and subscribe, ring the bell if you want to be notified that I've made another video, please do so. And I want to thank you again. Have a pleasant day until I see you next time. Bye-bye.